the show Game of Thrones and the books, A Song of Ice and Fire, they've got different tools. As an example, the books have train of thought, so we get a look inside characters' heads, which is huge. But the show has other tools like music to set the mood. Hats off to the man, Ramin Jawadi. Thanks, brother. Another difference between the books and the show is that the author, George R. R. Martin, he can keep characters a secret in the books in a way that's just not possible in the show. Sir Barristan the Badass is a great example. You know how Barristan shows up in the show in this scene here? I owe you my life, sir. The honor is mine. Mike Reed. Barry B. Old. There's no way to hide it, because we know what he looks like, unless he went a season without ever pulling off his hood, but we'd probably have been able to tell it was him just from his mouth. Anyway, this same scene occurs in the books, but we don't find out that it's him right away, because he's going by a different name, Arston Whitebeard, instead of Barristan. I'm sure some of you got it right away, but I'm a dumbass. I'm pretty easily tricked. I didn't get it. Arston Whitebeard is acting as a squire to a pit fighter that the show left out, a huge dude that fans love, a dude called Strong Belwas. We do eventually find out that it's Barristan, but it happens differently. It happens after he kicks some ass. Here's how it goes down. So Danny arrives to Young Kai, the second slave city, and she treats with two sellsword companies, the Storm Crows and then the Second Sons, and finally with a master slaver from the city. The head of the Second Sons is a guy called Miro. The dude is dangerous. He's dirty. Men who fight for gold have neither honor nor loyalty. They cannot be trusted. That's why the Second Sons are all the way out here in Slaver's Bay, because no one in the free cities would even hire them anymore under his leadership. You just can't trust him. He's a dangerous man, Khaleesi. Wisely, Danny does not trust him either. She gives him wine and tells him that she's going to attack in three days. But it's a trick. She's going to attack that very night, and she's hoping that he and his boys would be drunk. So Danny's side wins the day, or the night, and they free the slaves. Miro escaped though, at least for a bit. They catch him off screen, but then he escapes again, and Sir Jorah does not tell Danny because She's got a lot going on, and Jorah didn't want to add to her stress. He didn't want to worry her. That was a mistake. Because we've got this dangerous, shady dude out there, Miro, the Titans bastard, and he wants to kill Danny. He shaves his beard so as to disguise his appearance, and he hides among the refugees. When Danny goes out to embrace the refugees, Miro pops out of nowhere with a sword. He pulls her off her horse, and he's about to kill her when Old Man Whitebeard steps in. Check this out. Danny had stopped to speak to a pregnant woman who wanted the mother of dragons to name her baby when someone reached up and grabbed her left wrist. Turning, she glimpsed a tall, ragged man with a shaved head and sunburned face. Not so hard, she started to say, but before she could finish, he'd yanked her bodily from the saddle. The ground came up and knocked the breath from her as her silver whinnied and backed away. Stunned, Danny rolled to her side and pushed herself onto one elbow. And then she saw the sword. There's the treacherous sow, he said. I knew you'd come to get your feet kissed one day. His head was as bald as a melon, his nose red and peeling, but she knew that voice and those pale green eyes. I'm going to start by cutting off your teats. Danny was dimly aware of Missande shouting for help. A freedman edged forward, but only a step. One click slash, and he was on his knees, blood running down his face. Miro wiped his sword on his breeches. Who's next? I am. Arston Whitebeard leapt from his horse and stood over her, the salt wind riffling through his snowy hair, both hands on his tall, hardwood staff. Grandfather, Mira said, run off before I break your stick in two and bug you with. Old man fainted with one end of the staff, pulled it back, and whipped the other end about faster than Danny would have believed. The Titan's bastard staggered back into the surf, spitting blood and broken teeth from the ruin of his mouth. Whitebeard put Danny behind him. Miro slashed at his face. The old man jerked back, cat quick. The staff thumbed Miro's ribs, sending him reeling. Arson splashed sideways, parried a looping cut, danced away from a second, checked a third, mid-swing. The moves were so fast she could hardly follow. Misandu was pulling Danny to her feet when she heard her crack. She thought Arson's staff had snapped until she saw the jagged bone cutting from Miro's calf. As he fell, the Titan's bastard twisted and lunged, sending his point straight at the old man's chest. Whitebeard swept the blade aside, almost contemptuously, and smashed the other end of his staff against the big man's temple. Miro went sprawling, blood bubbling from his mouth as the waves washed over him. A moment later, the freedmen washed over him too, knives and stones and angry fists rising and falling in a frenzy. 
So they head back to her tent, and Jora eventually shows up. A squire with a stick slew Mural Bravos, is that the way of it? A stick, Danny confirmed, but no longer a squire. So Jora, it's my wish that Arston be knighted. No. No. The loud refusal was surprise enough. Stranger still, it came from both men at once. So Jora drew his sword. The Titan's bastard was a nasty piece of work and good at killing. Who are you, old man? A better knight than you, sir, Arston said coldly. Knight? Danny was confused. You said you were a squire. I was, your grace. He dropped to one knee. I squired for Lord Swan in my youth, and at Magister Illyrio's behest, I have served strong Belwas as well. But during the years between, I was a knight in Westeros. I have told you no lies, my queen, yet there are truths I have withheld. And for that, and all my other sins, I can only... Ask your forgiveness. What truths have you withheld? Danny did not like this. You will tell me. Now, he bowed his head. At Karth, when you asked me my name, I said I was called Arston. That much was true. Many men have called me that name while Belwas and I were making our way east to find you. But it is not my true name. She was more confused than angry. He has played me false, just as Jorah warned me. Yet, he saved my life just now. So Jorah flushed red. Miro shaved his beard, but you grew one, didn't you? No wonder you look so bloody familiar. Do you know this man? Danny asked the exile knight, lost. I know him. I saw him perhaps a dozen times, from afar most often, standing with his brothers or riding in some tourney. But every man in the Seven Kingdoms knew Barristan the Bold. Barristan's coming out party. Later on, another day, after Danny's calmed down a little bit, she's chatting with Barry and asks Brown Ben Plum to give Sir Barristan his longsword, but Whitebeard would not take it. I flung my sword at Joffrey's feet and have not touched one since. Only from the hand of my queen will I accept a sword again. Pretty cool. All right, one last thing. In the books, there are two sellsword companies of Yunkai, the Second Sons, led by Miro, and the Storm Crows, represented by three men, one of which was Dario. Dario killed the other two commanders of the Storm Crows, so it's pretty similar to the show. But in the show, they condensed the plot to just one sellsword company, the Second Sons, with two leaders and a lieutenant, Dario. Dario kills the other two, one of which was the guy that we just talked about, Miro, the Titan's bastard. And as we went over, Barrison fought Miro in the books, right? Well, here's a nice little nod to the books. In the second sons, we share everything. After the battle, maybe we'll all share you. So, Barristan, if it comes to battle, kill that one first. Gladly, your grace. Catch on the flip side. Go, Sir Barristan. Sing a song for me. <laughs>